The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky. Get better taste today. Lucky's taste better. So mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. Yes, Lucky's taste better. For Lucky's fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco goes into the cigarette proved the best made of all five principal brands. Let me repeat that. Proved the best made of all five principal brands. That's not an empty claim. That's a fact verified by leading laboratory consultants. For example, Foster D. Snell of New York City, who report, In our opinion, the properties measured are all important factors affecting the taste of cigarette smoke. We conclude that Lucky Strike is the best made of the five major brands. And don't forget, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco. There's no substitute for fine tobacco. And don't let anybody tell you different. So remember the facts. Enjoy fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in the cigarette that tastes better, Lucky Strike. When you buy cigarettes, remember, Lucky's taste better. Be happy, go lucky, go Lucky Strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wolf. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. It's morning, and Jack has just finished his breakfast. Did you have enough to eat, boss? Oh, yes, yes, plenty. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. <laughs> Rochester, this breakfast was wonderful. The, the coffee, the coffee was delicious. Thank you. The bacon was cooked just the way I like it. Thank you. And the eggs were absolutely perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Polly. Polly, did you lay those eggs? They tried to tell me I'm too young. <laughs> Isn't that... Isn't that cute? Rochester, how long has Polly been laying eggs? Ever since you put that light bulb in her cage and kept pointing to it. Oh. Well, it certainly took her a long time to catch on to what I meant. Yeah, before she laid any eggs, she laid three light bulbs. <laughs> oh, stop. Now, Polly, you know that I... Oh, say, boss, you told me to remind you to call Mrs. Montgomery. Oh, yes. Who's that? Oh, that's Dinah Shore. She's married to George Montgomery. I sent a copy of my song over to her house. I'm going to let her be the first one to record it. I'll call her now. When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll uh, come back to you. <laughs> when you ask me to forgive you, I'll return. Like the swallows at Serrano. <laughs> Hello? Oh, I'd like to speak to Miss Dinah Shore, please. Jack Benny calling. Like the swallows at Serrano Return to Capistrano <laughs> For you, my heart Hello, hello, Dinah Oh, this is Jack Benny How's George? And... Oh, I'm sorry I woke you up But I was anxious to know something, Dinah Did you receive the copy of my song? Good Look, don't you think it's the most wonderful tune you ever... Oh <laughs> Well, don't you think that the lyrics are novel and... Uh-huh. But, Dinah, you can't judge a song the first time you sing it. You've got to analyze it, take it apart. I don't mean that way. Paste it together again. <laughs> well, look. Uh, look, Dinah, if you'll just take the song... Dinah! Dinah! Oh, hello, George? <laughs> But George, George, look, I didn't wake you up, she did. Now look, George, George, you and I have been friends for years, and 
All right, acquaintances. <laughs> but look, George, about my song. If you just ask Dinah to... All right, if I woke you up, I'm sorry. You don't have to... You'll what? Well, if that's your attitude, it's okay with me. Goodbye. Well, we can cross him off the list. You mean her? No, him. He's going to stop sending us his laundry. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad Miss Shore refused to sing my song. I'd rather have a man do it anyway. Boss, why don't you call Mary Alonza? Mary Alonza? Yeah, you sent him a copy last night. How did you know? We got it back this morning. <laughs> so soon? Well, maybe he liked the song and he's waiting for an answer. Rochester, get me his number, will you? It's in my personal phone book. Yes, sir. There's the door. I'll get it. When you say, I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. Boy, is Dinah making a mistake. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Oh, Mary, come on in. <laughs> what are you giggling about? Oh, I just had to stop by and show you a love letter that Dennis sent me. A love letter? Mary, you mean Dennis still has that crush on you? Yes, ever since New Year's Eve, and it's getting worse. What do you mean? Well, last night he took me for a ride, and as he turned into a dark street, I said to myself, uh-oh. Uh-huh. Suddenly the car stopped and Dennis looked at me and said, Mary, we're out of gas. Uh-huh. And Jack, he did exactly what I thought he would do. What? He went and got some. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Let me see the letter Dennis wrote to you. Here, I'll read it to you. You know, it's really sweet. It is? Mm-hmm. My darling it's Mary. smart, too, isn't it? <laughs> My darling Mary. I hope you won't think I'm silly, but I keep your picture on the wall of my bedroom. I didn't want my mother to know who I'm in love with, so I took a pencil and drew a mustache and a derby hat on you. <laughs> I think I fooled my mother because now she's in love with you, too. Lovely, darling. And look how he finishes it. I love you madly and passionately and will never forget New Year's Eve and the kiss you gave me when I took you home. Thanking you in advance for your next shipment, I remain. <laughs> Yours truly, Dennis Day. Well, that's the cutest letter I've ever heard. Here's that number you wanted, boss. Oh, yes. Excuse me, Mary. I'm going to call Mary Alonza. Mary Alonza? Yeah, he's going to make a record of my song. If you say that you are sorry, then I will understand. Neither the harvest moon will pledge our love anew. So, Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Lanza, please. Uh, tell him Jack Benny's calling. So, my darling, though we've parted, come back to whence we started. <laughs> a... Hello? Hello, Mario? This is Jack Benny. I want to know how soon you'd like to make a record of my... What? But Mario... But Mario, look. Well, now, why should you... But Mario... But, 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 Well, if that's your attitude, Mr. Lanza, I'm not coming to that big party you're giving Friday night. Oh, I heard about it. <laughs> Goodbye. Who does he think he is anyway? That Mary Lanza. He won't sing my song, but that other song he sings. Be my love for no one else can end this yearning. Be my love. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> I suppose that's a better song than... When you say I beg your pardon, <laughs> then I'll come back to you. Uh, which song do you like better, Rochester? Be my love, I know. <laughs> Be my love. All right, all right. I merely asked you. There's someone at the door. Oh, hello, Dennis. Come on in. Don't talk to me, you cad. <laughs> What? Trying to steal my girl, eh? I gotta thrash you to within an inch of your life. 
Now, look, Dennis, you've got a cold. Isn't it, You're... Dilly? Now, don't try to change the subject. <laughs> I've read about men like you. You take a poor, innocent girl out of the make company, you get her a job on the radio, and then you think you own her. <laughs> Dennis. I know every move you make, you wolf. Look, look, I've been Dan... sitting up in that tree in front of your house watching you through the window. <laughs> What? Boy, do you look ugly in the morning. <laughs> Dennis. I thought you'd never get into that girdle. <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, look, Dennis, Mary told me about the big crush you've got on her, and you ought to forget about it. Yes, Dennis, you're a nice boy, and I'd hate to hurt your feelings, Oh, but... don't worry, Mary. You couldn't marry me if you wanted to. My mother disapproves. <laughs> of me? No, of me. <laughs> that I can understand. Now, Dennis, listen to me. Next week on my program, I want you to sing the song I wrote. When you say, I beg your part... <laughs> that kid's gonna make an old man out of me. Come to think of it, he did. <laughs> Say, Jack, i better be running along. I've got some shopping to do. Shopping? Mm -hmm. I want to go to Jerry Rothschild's and get a shirt for my father. Okay, Mary, wait a minute. I'll go with you. I want to get a haircut. All right, come on. It's such a nice day. Let's walk, huh? You see, Mary, there's Jerry Rothschild's in the middle of the block. Well, where are you going to get your haircut? At Jerry Rothschild's. They have a barber shop on the mezzanine. So while you're getting your father's shirt, I can get my hair cut. Oh, that's very convenient. And say, Jack, isn't that Mr. Kitzel coming toward us? Mr. Kitzel? Oh, it sure is. Hello, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> I said, hello, Mr. Kitzel. And to whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, don't you recognize me? I'm Jack Benny. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I just now came from the optometrist's office. He put drops in my eyes and I can't see so well. Oh, I hope they get better soon. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Kitzel, this is Miss Livingston. Oh. Uh, what's wrong with your eyes, Mr. Kitzel? I happen to be colorblind. Oh. You know, to me, yellow is brown. Uh, yellow is brown? And that's not all. Brown is green. Brown is green? Also, to me, green is yellow. Yellow is brown, brown is green, and green is yellow? Yeah, and last night at dinner, did this cause trouble? I saw my brother-in-law eating what looked like a hot dog, so I was smart and I asked, how do you like the cucumber? <laughs> and he said, what cucumber? I'm eating a banana. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. <laughs> my dear. <laughs> Mr. Kitson, we've got to be running along. I have an appointment at the barber shop to get a haircut. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Mm -hmm. You know, for the same reason, my wife is right now by the beauty parlor. Who is women? Well, what do you mean? Well, last week on the cover of Life magazine, she saw a girl with a poodle haircut. So right away, she has to get a poodle haircut, too. Really? Yeah. And personally, I'm happy. With her last haircut, she looked like a Saint Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to run along, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye. Goodbye, children. Uh, come on, Mary. Well, here it is, Rothschilds. Men's furnishing and barber shop. Let's go in. Now, if you want to get your father's shirt, the counter's right over there. Oh, okay, yes. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to buy a shirt. What size does your father wear, Mary? Well, just a minute. I've got Papa's letter right here. He wants a 15 and a half collar. Uh, sleeve length? 58. <laughs> 
58? Oh, lady, you must be mistaken. Why, the average sleeve length is 34. Certainly, Mary. Why does your father want such long sleeves? Well, Mama gave him a pair of gloves for Christmas, and he doesn't want to get them dirty. <laughs> what a family you've got. Look, Mary, while you're deciding on the shirt, I'll go and get... Are you, bud? Long time, no see. Oh, hello, hello. Jack, wasn't yes, that... Yes, that racetrack tower. I always run into it. Anyway, Mary, while you're deciding on the shirt for your father, I'm going Oh, to... hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Don. Don, I didn't know you traded here at Rothschild's. Oh, sure. It's so convenient having a barber shop and men's clothing store all in one place. It certainly is. What are you buying, Don? Well, nothing today. I just dropped in to exchange something. May I help you, sir? Why, yes. A friend of mine gave me this overcoat for Christmas. I'd like to exchange it, please. Certainly, sir. What's the trouble? Well, uh, I don't like the color. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but that coat only comes in blue. Oh, gee. However, if you wish, we'd be happy to refund you the $250. $250 for a coat? Would you uh, like me to give you the refund? Well, yes, as long as the color isn't exactly wait what I want. Wait a minute, Don, wait a minute. How can you do a thing like that? It's a Christmas present. Somebody gave that coat to you for Christmas. I mean, how can you take the refund? What about the spirit of Christmas? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I guess you're right, Jack, but gee, I just don't like the color. Well, Don, if you're gonna be stuck with the coat, I've got a birthday coming up next month. <laughs> Give it to me for a birthday present. But Jack, Jack, this coat won't fit you. So what? I'll bring it back here and get the refund. <laughs> It's simple. But, Jack, what about that speech you gave me about the spirit of Christmas? To me, it's a birthday present. I can do what I want with it. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? When you started that speech, I knew you had no Henry finish. Oh, Henry, oh, Henry, yeah. Are you people through, or do you go into a dance number? <laughs> Never mind. Now, Mary, I'm going to get my hair cut. Uh, I'll see you in a little while. Okay, Jack. I'll be browsing around the store. Okay. When you say, I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. da da dum bum 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 I'll return. Gee, look at all those beautiful suspenders and belts. I think I'll get myself a new belt. Oh, clerk. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Boy, those belts really look nice. Huh? Hey, bud. <laughs> Bud. Huh? Oh, for heaven's sake. Come here a minute. Look, fella, I'm busy. Leave me alone, will you? Okay. Just wanted to know what you were doing. Well, if you must know, I'm buying something to hold my pants up. Like what? A belt. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Get suspenders. But I want a belt. Belt hasn't got a chance. It hasn't? It looks good while it's going around, but at the end, belt buckles. <laughs> yeah, I, n I never thought of that. <laughs> Take my advice and put your money on suspenders. Suspenders? Are you sure? Well, look at the performance. Suspenders always come up from behind and finish in front. <laughs> God, I, don't know. I don't know what to do. You can take my word for it. Suspenders will never let you down. Well, I don't care what you say. I'm going to get a belt. Okay. They're your pants. So long. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, clerk. Clerk. Yes? I'd like to get this belt. Yes, sir. Would you like to look at suspenders? Suspenders? Yes, they're awfully good in the stretch. Now cut that off! <laughs> Just wrap up the bell. I'll pick it up after I get my hair cut. Gee, I'm in luck. All the barber chairs are empty. Maybe today I can get Mr. Drucker, the owner, to wait on me. 
Oh, hello, Mr. Drucker. Well, how do you do, Mr. Van? <laughs> I finally came in when you're not busy yourself. Uh, I'd like a haircut. Uh, certainly. Sit down and I'll get you a barber. Huh? Yeah, I'll be right back. You say, Harry, Mr. Benny wants a haircut. Will you take him? Not me. Let Maury do it. Not me. Yeah, how about you, Charlie? No, thanks. You now, wait a minute, boys. We've got to be fair about this. Who waited on him last time? I did, and when I finished, he offers me a tip. But my hands are full, so he says I'll slip it in your pocket. Well, at least you got something. What do you mean, something? When I added up my money, I was a dime short. <laughs> a shave, I'd do it. You would? Sure. Then when the police came, I could say it was an accident. <laughs> hey, Mr. Drucker, how about my haircut? Hey, just a minute. Well, boys, any volunteers? Well, uh, okay, I'll take them. You will? Why not? I had Stanford, too. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Benny, Mr. Gilbert will wait on you. Good, good. What'll it be, Mr. Benny? Just a haircut. Yes, sir. Shall I take off my glasses? You don't even have to take off your hat. <laughs> don't be so smart. Just give me a haircut. Yes, sir. <laughs> Say, Mr. Drucker, do we have to do it when there's only one customer? Yes, you do. What's that, Mr. Drucker? We put in a barbershop quartet. Billy Getz, Artie Stebbins, Mervyn Leroy, and Junior Lemley. Oh, what a quartet. Good. Good. You sing, boys. The old songs. The old songs. The good old songs for me. I love to hear those minor chords and good close harmony. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away, there's where my heart is turning. I want to watch the fine tobacco grow, the kind you always find in markets, you know. B, B, D, and O, other men who know. Down in Dixieland, it's their favorite friend. Down yonder, you will find that your friends like luckies cause they have no loose ends. Ask Daddy or Mammy or Remley or Sammy, then light up a lucky with me. How happy you'll be Smoke luckies and you all will agree There really is nothing like puffin' and puffin' On lucky so light one with me Said the governor of Alabama to the governor of Tennessee Light up a lucky with me, they better taste it Light up a lucky with me Say, that was very good, especially Junior Lemley. <laughs> Harry, Harry, don't take too much off the sides here, will you? Yeah, I'll watch it. Well, is our little customer happy today? How's the haircut coming? Fine, fine, Mr. Drucker. Would you also like a shampoo? No, 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 just a haircut. A massage? No, no, thank you. I, I tell you what I would like. I'd like a manicure. A manicure? Certainly. Just a moment, I'll get one of the girls. Oh, Miss Daniels. Yes? Mr. Benny would like a manicure. Will you take it? Not me. Let Betty do it. Not me. Yeah, how about you, Goldie? No, thanks. You now, wait a minute, girls. We've got to be fair about this. <laughs> Who took care of him last time? I did. For a 75-cent manicure, I had to sit there and polish 20 nails. <laughs> 20? When I got through with his hands, he took his shoes off. <laughs> I know what you mean. He did that to me once. Really? I didn't mind cutting his nails, but I had to play this little piggy at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> then he gave me a tip and cried.
ride all the way home. <laughs> Mr. Drucker, how about my manicure? In just a moment. Edith, you take it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Benny, the manicure is to be with you in a moment. Thank you. When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. When you ask... All me... right, Mr. Benny, I'm ready to give you manicure. Just put your fingers in this bowl of water. Certainly. Ouch! That water's hot. I know. I'm trying to melt your cold, cold heart. <laughs> Never mind. Just give me a manicure. Oh, Mr. Drucker. Yes? I think I want my shoe shine, too. You certainly I'll get a boy. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Benny wants a shoe shine. Will you take it? Not me. Yeah, how about you, Danny? No, thanks. Now, wait a minute, boys. We've got to be fair about this. <laughs> Who was the last one to shine Mr. Benny's shoes? I don't remember the answer, but that question was on a quiz program. <laughs> well, somebody's got to shine Mr. Benny's shoes. You do it, Danny. Not me, Mr. Drucker. I ain't got nothing against shining Mr. Benny's shoes, but it's murder getting around them pearl buttons. <laughs> Mr. Drucker, what about that shine? Hey, just a minute Oh, Jack, Jack Here I am, Mary Did you get your hair cut? Yes, and I was going to get a shine, too, but I'll let it go Oh, Mr. Drucker uh, Yes Uh, Mr. Drucker, wait till I turn the page here Maybe <laughs> Forget about this <laughs> Forget about the shine from the manicure. It sticks to my finger. <laughs> Forget about the shine and charge the haircut to my account. Oh, Harry. Harry Gilbert, you gave me such a good haircut. Here's a tip for you. Thank you, Mr. Bunny. Come on, Mary. You say, Harry, did I see right? What? Did Mr. Benny give you a dollar tip? Yep. Spin that old man around in a chair three times and he don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Lucky's taste better, and here's why. You get better taste from fine tobacco. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco. There's no substitute for fine tobacco. Don't let anybody tell you different. What's more, Lucky's taste better because they're made better. Prove the best made of all five principal brands. Let me repeat that. Prove the best made of all five principal brands. That's not an empty claim. That's a fact verified by leading laboratory consultants. For example, Froling and Robertson of Richmond, Virginia report, It is our conclusion that Lucky Strike is the best made of these five major brands. So friends, when you buy cigarettes, remember the facts. Lucky's are made better. Lucky's taste better. And to learn the plain, simple truth about the important factors that affect the taste of a cigarette, send for your free copy of a new booklet, What Makes Lucky Strike Taste Better. Just drop a card to Lucky Strike, Post Office Box 99, New York 46, New York. That's Lucky Strike, Post Office Box 99, New York 46, New York. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky. We're a little late, folks. Good night. This is Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night presented by Lucky Strike. Consult your newspaper for time and station. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. The Jack Benny show is heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Transcribed, this is the CBS Radio Network.